And see my head is filled with demons So I know that angels exist Feeling stuck at the bottom of the deepest sinking Even though my heart is broken Empty moments still I know I spit it Pulled and cold is frozen Flows of oceans I've been rolling Tides of hopeless minds divided And filled with lies I killed my ties but where's my motive huh? I've been on this path so long I forgot where home is Real or worse Still deserved I feel reversed Going back and forth Whoever sees this and subscribes right now Will get a free bucket of Greece. What's going on YouTube? It's Noxo and we're back with our reaction series. So today, today man, today is gonna be a great day. It's always gonna be a good day when you have epic rap battles of history on deck. So you guys know I read the comments, the good, the bad, the ugly, the troll, everything in between. And thank you guys for all the requests that you do because I do go back after each video. I read through the comments. I look at what's voted the most, what's been recommended the most. And this one is definitely one of the more higher requested ones. Apparently, it's very bar heavy. I got to turn my brain off for this one. I'm talking about Zeus versus Thor. Now, quick disclaimer on this, guys. Um, you know that I love history. I actually, a couple months ago, read a book on Norse mythology that I found just incredibly interesting. Maybe I'll put that link below, but I've always loved Norse mythology. You guys know I like Tolkien, Lord of the Rings, and a lot of his influences for his, his worlds and his creations originated from Norse mythology and Beowulf and different tales like that. So it's always been interesting for me to study it. Now, what I don't know as much of is the Greek side. So I'm going to put a disclaimer on this. I have not heard this song yet. I have not dove into this battle, but what I have done is I've done some reading up on Zeus, sort of his history, and just try to brush up a little bit on Greek mythology because I don't want to go in on this completely blind. But yeah, this should be uh, this should be interesting. But real quick, guys, before we go any further, I want to give a quick shout out to the song in the intro. If you like that, yes, I am a rapper. There's a good chance you like these dissections, the way I think about music and things. You know, I make music that makes you think. I like my doubles and my triples. Makes you feel a certain way. I have a brand new album, Chaos Theory, 20 tracks, blood, sweat, soul, heart. So if you want to support me and support this channel directly, I will put that link below. But anyways, anyways, Zeus, Thor, step up to the plate. Yes. Already, man, I love the sound and the clap of thunder and a storm is coming. And you can tell this is going to be another one of those epic sounding beats. But this is truly epic because we have the two gods of thunder going head to head. One from Greek mythology, the other from Norse mythology. I'm talking about Zeus versus Thor. And we're here for it because it's Lego style and I'm hoping for more Lego violence because I love it. <laughs> Build it. Zeus! Thor Thor! How dare you challenge my immortal throne? I'm a father of the gods. Put your daddy on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you challenge my immortal throne? Because, you know, Zeus is, well, he's, he's the head. Of Mount Olympus, isn't he? He's the head of all the gods. And you could argue that essentially he's the one who started the gods because his father, Kronos, was eating the gods. And uh, Zeus's wife, not Zeus's wife, Kronos's wife convinced Kronos to keep Zeus alive, replaced it with a rock for who knows whatever reason, because, you know, a rock tastes like a baby, I guess, when you're Greek. But, anyways, uh, Zeus was saved. Goes back frees all of his siblings, banishes Kronos. So essentially, you know, he, he kind of is, even though he didn't birth them, he's, he's like the father of the gods, started it all, man. But Thor? Thor is the son of Odin, like the real boss in Valhalla, in the kingdom of Norse gods, is Odin. He's dropping the disses already and the history knowledge. Let's go! Challenge my immortal throne. I'm the father of the gods. Put your daddy on the phone. Maybe Odin could beg me for a truce. Because when Zeus lets loose, I'll put your cross right your neck in a new. Ooh, like that's a dope flow. Come on. Challenge my immortal throne. I'm the father of the gods. Put your daddy on the phone. Maybe Odin could beg me for a truce. Because when Zeus. Maybe Odin could beg me for a truce. Do, 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 do. Nice little switch up, man. Hey, we're getting more technical with these flows. Alright, so Freya was promised to wed one of the giants. I can't remember the giant's name. And it was all through a trick of Loki, because Loki, 
he was he was known as a trickster of the gods, uh, Thor's brother, right? So to make up for it, Loki had to go on a mission with Thor. Thor dressed up as Freya, pretended to be Freya. You know, went to the wedding. He he just went ham at the wedding, didn't he? I mean, he just like they were amazed at how much that he ate and drank. He sat there and partied his ass off. Then he turned around and just like killed them all. So he went he went pretty badass. That's the uh, that's the story there. But where am I going? Why is my mind just going off on tangents? Oh, the one thing I didn't like, though, was that talking about Odin would probably make a truce. Maybe Odin in, in the MCU and Marvel world. But to me, this is this is the Odin of the Norse world. Like, Odin of the Norse world. No, we're all about Viking mythology, man, and war. Like, you know, you go to Valhalla as a human from dying in battle. So, no, I don't I don't think we'd make a truce there. By a mortal throne. I'm a father of the gods. Put your daddy on the phone. Maybe Odin could beg me for a truce. Because when Zeus lets loose, I'll put your cross, dress your neck in a noose. I'm like nah. Medusa. I'll stone a motherfucker if he looks at me wrong. <laughs> Oh, and we're getting back with some Lego violence. I love how he just turns to stone because when Medusa looks at you with her head of snakes, turns you to stone. That's a nice little double because in Greek times too, they would stone motherfuckers down. So let's go. I like this beat. <sighs> now we're getting animalistic in here. So uh, Zeus would apparently like to turn into animals and lure women. One time he turned into a bull. And he raped a woman. Uh, another time he turned into a swan. And then I, I think that he, when he raped her, he was still in swan form. And apparently that's how Helen of Troy was was born. Uh, interesting flexo to pull out the animalistic uh, rapism. Also, I think a swan's uh, private part is actually called a slong. That's where it comes from. But Zeus's slong. You know what we're talking about here, don't you? Ooh, again, a nice flow. I'm on point like Poseidon Strident. Here he just pauses right there to fit into that rhythmic pocket. That's nice, man. Instead of just going into Poseidon like Poseidon's Trident. That's dope. And Poseidon had a trident, three different points, so he's actually on point three times. <laughs> I like how the, the balls of the frost giant are just like censored out right there, but one of the great enemies of the gods and Thor loved to kill the frost giants. And he would travel through the Bifrost into the world of the Frost Giants and kill him. <laughs> oh, and that's a cool little historical reference. Well, actually, and that's another dope one. So Thor literally taking his hammer as he comes in on that transition, killing one of the Frost Giants. So appropriate. And then there he is standing on the rainbow burning bridge known as the Bifrost that connects Asgard to Midgard where the humans live into the other world. Get a taste of the Scandinavian greatness. Brought oh my god, get a taste of the Scandinavian greatness. It kind of reminds me of Skittles, you know, like taste the rainbow, taste of this. That's dope. And shout out to Scandinavia, Norse mythology. Come on, we here for this. Nox is so caught up on the awesome Lego references, he doesn't even catch the best bar so far. You shape-shifting rapist. We talked about that was a weird flex coming through from Zeus. So for Thor to flip that on him, nice. Nice. Thor's winning already. Oh, that's Loki. Norse. I love how the whole time that he's rapping, Loki's just like jamming out in the background dancing. But I don't get nice. I get Norse playing off a of nice, you know, bending it. Because Norse in the Viking way, they weren't nice at all. You know, they were they were warriors. They would rape and pillage and burn and travel and destroy. I mean, they were Vikings. Vikings is also a dope show. Rage and thunderstorm force. Because I don't get nice. I get Norse. Norse. Oh, hold on. It's a boy and we'll fight it out. Ooh, hoo -hoo. holla at your boy, baby. Valhalla at your boy, Valhalla. The halls of the gods. I like how he flips that. And then, uh, what was it? We'll flight, well, we'll flight it out. Very interesting about flight, people. So flighting was the origins of battle rap, I guess you could say. And it was big in, uh, in Norse mythology. And Beowulf, um, 
the main character, he argued with Beowulf and they got into a flight. So it's just like a poetic sparring, you know, and it's like a test of intellect and you try to demean the other person. So it is like the origins of battle rapping. So we can thank the Vikings for battle rapping and flighting. And also Loki, speaking of Loki, like he was a really good flighter at the time too. So why does Nox know these things? Well, Nox does have Norwegian blood and people wonder why Nox is such a good rapper. It's because it's in my roots, people. That's a cool line. Ooh, great historical reference. Wordplay on Thor right now is just winning this, man. Keep your Asgard up, like keeping your guard up when you're boxing. That's why he's got the gloves on. But then also, will Ragnarok it out? Is it rock? Hang on, hang on, one more time. Boy, it will fight it out. Ah, Ragnarok the house. Like saying, like, I rock the house. Like, I get the party started. I get it crunk in here. But also, Ragnarok is the Armageddon, essentially, in Norse mythology. That's like the end and the death of the gods. So, what Thor is saying here is, you know, he's going to Ragnarok the house. He's going to bring death to your doorstep, Zeus. What you doing about that? Oh, shit. We just missed something. I get Norse. Light it out. But keep your ass guard up. I rag no rock the house. You tell him kiss your sister. Ooh. That's grosser than a god. Yeah, I'm the thunder. Hey, another Medusa reference because Medusa was a gorgon. I think there was three of them. And uh, yeah, you know, they all had snakes and were ugly and turned you to stone. And then, uh, yeah, the, the Greek gods really had a lot of incest going on. Like, didn't Zeus have a baby with one of his sisters and then he married his other sister? They used to, yeah, they just, there weren't really lines in that world. I like how he takes his helmet off there and then you see that he looks more like, uh, uh, what's his name? Chris Hemmingsworth. What, what is it? Why can't I remember celebrities' names now? Come on, Knox, but you guys know what I'm saying. The, Character who plays Thor, Chris, he's Australian, right? Thunder Down Under, Down Under is in Australia, nailing Natalie Portman, because Natalie Portman was in the first Thor movie. That was his girlfriend, that's who we got with. And then also, I love this, uh, hang on, where, where is it? Where is it? Boy, it There's so much happening in this one. This is crazy, man. My brain's going to be tired. Now, but keep your ass guard up, I rag no rock the house. You tell him kiss your sister, that's grosser than a god. Yeah, I'm the Thunder Down Under, nailing Natalie Portman. So we get a Star Wars shout out. And that was that was really the movie, the the prequels that brought Natalie Portman to fame, wasn't it? And the world really got to know Natalie through that. So I love that she's playing uh you know, her character in Star Wars there and we have a little Lego shout out to that. Um, kiss your sister. That's grosser than a god. Yeah, I'm the thunder down under <laughs> She does not look happy. Portman. Who would ever worship someone as abusive as Zeus or ruthless to humans? Who is like the clash of the douches? As abusive as Zeus is. Ruthless to humans, do 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 do. Another great flow switch, man. Some great technical flow patterns. Would ever worship someone as abusive as Zeus? Is ruthless to humans. Your crew is like the Clash of the Douches. <laughs> That's a Clash of the Titans shout out. It's a Clash of the Douches. Okay, clever. Worship someone as abusive as Zeus is ruthless to humans. Your crew is like the clash of the douches. Ruling over the great some people weak and fright. I'd spit in your face, but you'd probably like it. Only a mind. Oh, because he's saying, you know, I mean, Zeus is already running around raping people as swans, so he likes that, that dirty, dirty. So if he spit in his face, he'd probably like it. And didn't I? I can't remember when I was looking up the, uh, the Greek stuff, if I read somewhere. Like, wasn't it if you spat in someone's face three times, it was good luck? So I think it could be a play off of that, too. I might be wrong there, but I, I think it was something like that. Like, it was just weird. If you if you spat on someone three times, it could be taken as good luck. So maybe that's a flip on that, too. Great, some people. And then also, I like the comparison because, like, the Norse gods rule over the Vikings. And we know the Vikings are, are pretty damn badass. And, and the Greeks, you know, they uh, they like philosophy. They're more pacifistic. He's saying, you know. They're weak. Not like Vikings. And then also, I mean, yeah, the... Well, I don't know necessarily that the Greek gods were just completely ruthless to humans. There's a lot of times that they empathized and they helped out humans. Of the douches, ruling over the great, some people weak and fright. I'd spit in your face, but you'd probably like it. Only a mindless fool would knock the fathers of philosophy. My mm. built the bedrock of democracy. With a See, there it is philosophy, democracy, 
Originated in Greece, nice. Mindless fool would knock the fathers of philosophy. My Greeks built the bedrock of democracy. With astronomy, they charted out the movements of my kin. All the pinks are out Olympus and me the king. <laughs> oh, that makes me giggle. The pimps of Mount Olympus. Because, again, I mean, the hey, it felt like the gods had nothing better to do, man. They were bored a lot, so they got horny, and they'd come down to Earth and, you know, make the bedrock, I guess you could say. But also, I like the lines talking about uh, astronomy, and that's true, too. Like, the Greeks started to plot the stars. And, uh, I mean, yeah, all you have to do is look at today and, you know, astrology and, like, what's your star sign? You know, I'm a Cancer, but that has basic ba roots, basic Words are eluding me now, but that is Greek origins in terms of the etymology of those words. Gemini, those things, different star signs come from the Greeks and our Greek references. So, bonus points for that. All right. Astronomy, they charted out the movements of my kin. All the pimps are my yeah, Movements of my kin, because the gods in the stars, tracing the star signs and lines. Send me the king pin. Let this sink in. I'm about to rain on your parade. Is he trigger finger quicker with the bolt said who said? <laughs> oh, I love him throwing the bolts out. Shout out to Usain Bolt. Jamaican runner, amazing at the 100 meters and 200 meters, and just, yeah, he's a boss. So points for those lines. And then also, like, he could control the weather and rain on your parade. Famous saying, you know, I'm going to make it rain on you. Kid, I'm about to rain on your parade. Is he trigger finger quicker with the bolts and who say? Uh. Your history, I'll be the first to put it in writing. MC Hammer just got struck twice by Greece Fight. Oh. Rain on. MC Hammer, shots fired. Because MC Hammer can't touch this. Do, 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 do. You know, when he was in the uh, parachute pants, what he's saying is that, you know, you're kind of corny because MC Hammer was not taken seriously by a lot of MCs. I'm sorry, MC Hammer, if for some reason you're watching this. I still love that song, though, and those pants were pretty damn cool. What else do we have to break down? Be the first to put it ah, in. be the first to put it in writing because the Vikings, even though, like, for instance, they sailed all over the world, man. I mean, they were the first to hit America's before Columbus did and then Iceland and Greenland and all over the place, man. Great travelers, but they never wrote anything down and never truly recorded their history it was all spread through you know word of mouth whereas the greeks uh you know greek alphabet right put things into writing recorded their history right. plato we talked about this in the epic rap battles eastern versus western philosophy is he trigger finger quicker with the bolt said who say your history i'll be the first to put it in writing mc hammer just got struck twice by greece lightning right love the sound effect ad libs again of lightning striking but you know lightning never strikes in the same place twice so what he's doing is he's contradicting that. He's going to strike lightning twice. In this case, Grease Lightning. Shout out to Grease Lightning, the movie, of course. But then also, like, Grease sounds like the country of Grease. Nice little double we threw in right there. Grease Lightning, like it's slick lightning. I'll be the first to put it in writing. MC Hammer just got struck twice by Grease Lightning. Rain, old man, this is hardly a drizzle. <laughs> you couldn't give the women in my homeland the sniffles. <laughs> Again, I like the flip on that. I like how he's taking some of his lines, flipping it back on him. But, you know, the uh, the women for Thor, those were the Valkyries. So when you died, they guided you to Valhalla. But then the actual women, like the Norse women, were renowned to be shield maidens. And they fought in the battles and the wars as well. So he's saying, you know, our women are badass. I mean, this is this is nothing. We're used to living in harsh conditions. We're up in Scandinavia, man. No. Man, this is hardly a drizzle. You couldn't give the women in my homeland the sniffles. You can keep your astronomer. I'll sail with the conquerors nah. for thousands of kilometers discovering the continents. I'm alpha dog. Hey, there it is. Like we talked about. I like that. Hey, clever, man. Clever. All right. I was kind of leaning on Zeus, if I'm being honest, because that last verse has some dope flows. And then, yeah, some nice wordplay flips on him. But then Thor is now taking that and rebuttaling that. Very good, man, because like I said, you know, the Greeks were more concerned about, you know, putting their brains to use and staying where they were, where the Vikings were out just exploring the world, man, taking on everything. I sailed with the conquerors for thousands of kilometers, discovering the continents of Alpha Dog. Shout out to Lee Erickson, right? One of the first and earliest Vikings to hit North America. I sailed with the conquerors for thousands of kilometers, discovering the continents of Alpha Dog dominant. You can't beat me. I will drop. <laughs> Did he just kick a dog out of the ship? Why did why did he do that? Alpha dog dominant. I like the alpha there because, again, the Greek alphabet, like the alpha. So he's alpha, like he's the prime, he's dominant. That's a clever flip. And then the dogs. Dogs. Did the, Viking, the Vikings had pets. They didn't have dogs, though, did they? They didn't tame wolves. No, I don't think so. 
Unless it's talking about like uh, Loki's son, Fenrir. So Loki had three kids with the uh, a giant. They like to get with giants if you guys don't see what's happening there. But uh, yeah, one of them was Jormunger, who was the serpent, who was in the sea and caused all the waves and everything. The other one was Hell. Get it? The origins of Hell. And then uh, the last one was Fenrir, the, the great wolf. And what the gods did was they, they chained him up because it was predicted that he would be a part of Ragnarok and that he would eat Odin and bring about, you know, the fall of the gods, essentially, which did happen through Ragnarok. So alpha dog dominant. I'm kind of taking the Fenrir lines. Maybe I'm going too far, and I just want to take this as an opportunity to flex on you guys with how much I know about Norse mythology. That's probably the case. Thousands of kilometers discovering the continent. Some alpha dog dominant. You can't beat me. I will drop you like Greece's GDP. Send you deeper underground. That's a good one. When did this come out? 2014, right. Very appropriate. We all know Greece went through some times of terrible economic crisis. You know, the EU helped to bail them out and try to keep them uplifting, but gross domestic product, I mean, their GDP was just way down. The economy was crashing, man. You can't beat me. I will drop you like Greece's GDP. Send you deeper underground than the depths of your Hades. Now make like your daddy and swallow my baby. Oh, and we talked about this at the beginning with Kronos would swallow his babies, make like your daddy, so you can you can suck it. That's a clever historical way to say you can suck it. And I think when he was talking about the GDP, I just caught too that he's burning the money up. L love love the Lego visualization just to bring it all around full circle. The depths of your Hades. Now make like your oh, and he'll put you on the ground like Hades because uh, you know Zeus rules above, Lord of the Skies. Hades, his brother, is the lord of the underworld. Uh, caused a lot of resentment between Hades and Zeus, obviously. Not sure if that's necessarily just... Well, kind of. Like he's saying, like, you're not going to be mainstream anymore. I'm going to take your ass underground. And then also playing off of the GDP, like everything's dropping. Like you're going so far down underground. And swallow my baby. You think the underworld scares the ruler of the sky? Mm. You're joking. Loki must have written your lies. By the time... <laughs> Love how Loki's just mid-dance and pauses. Like, hey, hey, hold up. Because Loki, again, he was a trickster. He was renowned for lying. Very clever taking that. Like, Loki must have been your ghostwriter here. Oh, snap. That is a bigger diss than I thought. Because, you know, one of the worst disses is to say that someone is, is, has a ghostwriter. They're not even writing this themselves. That's an automatic L. But, again, we talked about Loki and flighting. Like, Loki was a dope battler, man. So if Loki is writing uh, Thor stuff, I feel like Thor should be taking the W. I don't know. Let's keep going. Underworld scares the ruler of the sky. Are you joking? Loki must have written your lies. By the time I finish whipping you, it wits and rhymes. You'll need a lighter for your ship because a Viking just died. Ah. <laughs> so when the Vikings died, put them in a ship, you know, put the sword on them. Sometimes they would sacrifice some of their servants to follow them and guide them into the afterlife, into Valhalla. And they put them on a boat and just burn it. And uh, yeah, Viking death. I like that. No, he didn't. He just smashed the plate down and yelled, Opa! I got a Greek wedding, but it's like a, you know, just like exclamation, a celebration. Opa! And what he does this time is he's, he's kicking his penis in, and he called it a wrinkly dick into his toga. Zeus is often depicted wearing a toga in the fashion of the Greeks. Also wrinkly because he's old because, you know, he got around a lot. It's good. The oracle should have and the oracle. Okay, the oracle was the uh, the voice of the gods. Like, you know, every city, every city-state had an oracle that you would go to to try to get, like, prophecies from the gods. And it was like a medium between the gods and the, the humans. Your wrinkly dick back in your toga like, Opa! Here, take these crack before your eyes. Ooh. When you get to river sticks, tell your three-headed bitch I say hi. <laughs> I think that last line did it for me. I like how Thor just flips it back on them. So when you put drachma in their eyes, the reason they did that was when people died to help them pass through. It was for the ferryman at the river sticks in the underworld in order to pass into the underworld. And the drachma was supposed to be payment for that. And then the hell is the name of the three-headed dog that guards the gates of the underworld? Before your eyes. When you get to river sticks, tell your three-headed bitch I say hi. But that's what it is. That's nice. <laughs> I like this one, man. Wow, that was a brain teaser, too, that's for sure. Oh, 
more Lego violence. Oh, so they're showing off who uh, who did the Lego animations. That was dope, man. I always love these Lego ones. Valhalla at your boy t-shirts. I'm just letting it play out. You know, I don't want to be rude and cut it off too early. Wow. Well, maybe I am biased. Oh, I'm definitely biased because, again, I've already flexed on you with my Norse mythology, and I've definitely read a lot more of that than Greek mythology and have been more interested in it. The only reason that I read up on any Greek mythology is because I was doing this battle. But I, I must say that in terms of the level compared to doing like Hitler versus Vader, like the level is definitely up more in this one just in terms of the internal schemes. Great flow and rhyming pockets to sit in. Very clever wordplay. Doubles and triples thrown in there. Great rebuttals. Yeah, it was a good battle, man. This was a good battle and definitely uh, pushed, pushed my brain. It obviously did because I can't even speak anymore. I'm going to have to go have a little power nap after this one. But who do you guys think won? Who do you guys think won? I'm going to give it to Thor because I just like some of his punches better. I like some of his rebuttals better. But maybe you think Zeus won. And if you did, you need to justify it with me in the court of public troll opinion below. Thank you guys. ERP, you are Knox Hill certified. So hope you guys liked today's video. If you did, be sure to smash that like button. Comment down below any other ERBs you want to see me do or if there's other artists you want to see me check out. I try to read all of your comments, guys. I respond to as much as I can. So please keep commenting and keep posting. Also, if you're somehow here at the end of this video, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Obviously, you enjoyed this. You're enjoying these ERBs. I'm trying to do them on a weekly basis. So keep up with me. Keep up with the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Notifications on. Also, also, this is your reminder that tomorrow, Saturday, we are back with another live stream. You guys want to see me break my brain, come through, say hello, come support the live stream. They're always fun. Really good energy. Good times, man. Thank you, guys. It's Knox Hill. This is your reminder to stay safe, to stay positive. Catch you in the next vid. I'm out.